Welcome back from the lunch break. Um, my name is Moritz Wanzenberg and I want to talk with you about um, customizing your operator, how you can leverage customize to make your uh, operator deal with all the hairy stuff your mu users may need, but you don't want to implement yourself. Uh, so to give a, big of a bit of a background, uh, I'm a maintainer of the Pireo Status Store project, which is a software-defined storage solution for Kubernetes. Uh, all parts of it are fully open source. It's part of the CNCF sandbox. And because it's uh, a software-defined storage solution, is maybe a, a bit of a um, beast to set up manually. We have an operator which automates all the um, all the uh, yeah labor-intensive tasks, and uh, that exists since 2022. 20, and we had a complete rewrite last year from all the lessons we learned creating the first operator. So build it twice, I guess. So what even is an operator? Um, it helps you create, configure, and manage an application. That application can be a full project like uh, a software-defined storage solution or a database or whatever. So maybe you want to write your own um, uh, operator to um, kind of cloudify your uh, application. And so what that would look like, um, for example, is you take in your um, your own kind of defined object. And uh, in this case, this is from Perius Data Store. We just define that we want to have a cluster for um, software-defined storage. And then the operator ma manages all the set up pieces and uh, creates all the kind of workload, res workload resources and connects them up and so on. And so if you, if you design an operator, you mostly want to keep it simple for the users. You want kind of the null configuration where you don't have to specify anything to already be something that's useful for people. And you want to uh, want to um, ensure that only the, or you want to mainly expose the kind of configuration that is specific to your um, application. You want to focus on what is different on my application. What do I personally need? So now, of course, your users um, they want to run the, the application. They want to configure the applications, but they may have some additional needs that you haven't thought about. So. They want to, perhaps they have a, a big setup and so require some uh, tight constraints on the resources. Maybe they want, don't want to deploy your solution on the whole cluster, but only part of it, so they need to set affinity. They maybe want to set up some networking or additional networking configuration or just tune your workload and with, whatever, with their needs. So if you just do the naive thing and have your um, focus on the application, then you lose out uh, on all these needs by the user that, you're, that you haven't, uh, that you didn't provide any um, configuration option initially. So how do we go the last mile with um, kind of covering all these user needs? Um, one option would be if your operator deploys some workload, you could kind of mirror all the options that may be useful for the users. And this is something that some operators choose to do. So they have kind of, okay, you can specify additional um, affinity. You can specify additional um, sidecar containers. You can uh, configure additional configuration, whatever else they need. But that is kind of a lot of work. You need to copy all the kind of workload resources over to your own uh, configuration. And yeah, so it's, it's basically a lot of work. Uh, another option would be to use uh, server-side apply. So you just deploy your stuff and the user can make uh, edits using if you're using server-side apply that kind of merge with whatever the operator deploys. But that is just a mess that you don't want to deal with because it's not really repeatable because every time you, the operator changes something, perhaps um, uh, the user would need to reapply its, its changes and it just doesn't work for some kind of uh, use cases. 
And the last option, this, this is one, uh, the one I want to talk about, is kind of provide a generic patch option, which um, I initially heard about with the QBIRT operator, and um, can see how we, I think, effectively um, make use of that. So the idea here is that the user can kind of just give it an override for every resource it's, it's, uh, that the operator creates. And so it's always um, kind of the user can always make the changes they need. So how would you, would you go about implementing that? Because writing a patch engine for Kubernetes objects doesn't seem like a fun idea, but luckily there's already customize, which is uh, kind of the uh, best tool for that. So it's a purely declarative approach to configuration. And you basically, you have your base um, resources that you define where you just have the kind of baseline and then you can make patches, which are just, for, you can do full patches or you can just do um, kind of having fragments of uh, the deployment or other mm. Kubernetes objects. Uh, and you can use it as a, uh, as a standalone binary. It's integrated in kubectl, and it can also be integrated with Golang, which is nice if you're writing your operator in Go. Um, so how, we, how do we use that? Um, again, taking the example of Piraeus, um, we have our normal resources, we have the configuration, and what's happening in the background in the operator, it kind of builds um, this customization where it has uh, the basis that is kind of the uh, default stuff that's always being applied. And then all the different configuration options that a user may have can get transformed into, these, uh, into this patch section and then that gets built by the operator and applied to the Kubernetes uh, API. So basically this approach right here, we have our base manifests built in, in the operator. We have uh, changes that are managed by, or kind of big uh, configuration changes that are managed by the operator. So setting up TLS, for example, requires some secret resources and setting some different options that are still better hidden from the, or nicer to hide from the user but the user can make any changes they want. Like uh, for example here, you, we provide this kind of pod template where you can basically set or override anything uh, in our pod template that they want. Um, then there's also the patches, which is kind of in here going even further and having full patch support, which is already built in customized. Um, so, with that, uh, I want to give a bit of an insight because right now this might, if you're writing an operator, this might, so, might sound a bit scary because you're basically giving your users full kind of control of whatever your operator is creating and then they may, might break um, stuff. Um, so far, we haven't had that happen yet. Um, the users are very, uh, careful in what kind of uh, stuff they uh, want to apply and mostly they know what they want because this is kind of so deep into into the stack that um, they have a pretty good idea of what they want to change. Uh, another uh, nice thing about this approach is that rollback is pretty easy because you just have to kind of roll back the last change the user made. And so it's also easy for the users to experiment because in the operator approach, it's getting reconciled every time you make a change and then you have the, the um, same state as you had before um, kind of breaking your deployment perhaps. Um, one drawback of this approach is that you had, have to have some um, stability guarantee of the resources you deploy because if the user tries to change something, but then you just delete this whole resource in a new release because you found a different approach or a better approach, then they won't be very happy if they have to change, um, if they have to change their own resources every time they upgrade your operator. And so there's uh, a bit of uh, work we had to do because on, at one point we switched from 
some deploying some raw ports to a daemon set and this influenced of course the uh, patches that the users already created um, and so we had to spend a bit of effort converting in there um, one nice thing is that um, with this approach you have kind of if there is any bug in your operator or it behaves not as expected or it just doesn't deploy in one of your uh, users clusters you can create workarounds without having to re-release your operator and fix it in there you can just if there's a github issue or um, where one user complains you can analyze that and write a, a patch for it that gets applied to the operator um, configuration and then um, then the user can start working and you can focus on fixing it um, for good. Um, another benefit for developers is um, you don't have to rebuild the operator every time um, you make some kind of changes because you can just try it out um, using, using this approach and making the, uh, changes to the resources previously. Yeah, and I think that's... Um, yeah, so quick summary, um, the user may want to influence a lot of stuff that your operator is not or that you don't really care about in your operator. Your operator is focused on how do I deploy this application, but you're perhaps not focused on where it deploys and with it, what exact options and uh, labels it deploys. Um, so keeping up with this is maybe cumbersome, so you can ha have users create these patches and customize. You can use that to uh, do the heavy lifting of applying these changes to your resources. Yeah, um, if you want to see that in action, uh, as I said, it's uh, operator is fully open source at the Pyrrhus Data Store project. You can give that a try, even if you're interested in the technology or if you need a storage solution. Um, you can shoot me an email or uh, my personal GitHub account down there. And that's it. Thank you. Now, are there any questions or I don't know how much time we have left for the next talk? Yeah? Uh, can you please say how the deployment flow then looks like? For example, I have some resources controlled resource and I'm modifying it and I also have some page for this resource. So how then goes? So I deploy the resource first and then the operator doing some changes for sure it's not doing it in real time and then I need to reapply the page or what so Yeah so basically um, so if we go back to um, let's go back to here. So I guess you initially start off with this state and then all the magic kind of happens. Um, yeah, this is one thing that perhaps could be improved with some kind of dry run mode because um, in, our, in our source code we ha of course have all the resources kind of just lying there. Um, but it's perhaps not that transparent to the user what kind of changes they can make. So this is something we may implement in the future but right now it's kind of you have to document uh, all the different options and one nice thing I guess is um, with this approach of having this kind of pod template because you kind of know what a pod template usually is and then it's kind of transparent with what's happening in the background so this is one of the on the of the latest things we added and I think this is one approach that's already in use by some other operators as well. I think Keycloak and Qbert and so use this same kind of um, approach. Any other questions? Then, yeah? Do you still use server-side applied or is it fully client side? Uh, yes, we still use server side apply. Um, so you can still make, in theory, make changes. Um, we don't kind of recommend it because I think this approach is, um, makes it kind of better reproducible because you don't have to think um, what kind of changes you made after the fact, after the operator ran. Um, with that, it's kind of always in your, in your operand resources. 
defined. Yeah. I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you for responsiveness. And I have issues in <laughs> responding in hours. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, then. I think the next talk is already scheduled to have taken part for five minutes ago. <laughs> Sorry for taking up the time.